Thanks so much for the great introduction, Reed. I'm, I'm thrilled to be a part of this year's Think Tank and to be presenting with all these incredible experts. And I'm equally excited to be talking about this subject um, for today, which is teaching the pyramid of success, using Coach Wooden's pyramid as a foundation for teaching and developing character in your athletes. We have three objectives as we go through today. One, to set the groundwork of why the pyramid of success is so important uh, for today's athletes. Two, to do a brief overview of the pyramid what each block means and why Coach Wooden constructed it that way. The third objective is to give you some strategies as you go out to the practice field with your athletes to utilize the pyramid to communicate, develop relationships, and build character within your program. Often, Coaches and teachers, I think unwittingly and unfairly label students and athletes lazy or hardworking, committed or uncommitted, team player or selfish. And many of us make the assumption that the desired qualities are things that kids know instinctively or have been taught, you know, elsewhere in their life. We have to be willing, as uh, Dr. Wayne Goldsmith says, to teach those skills as much as we teach the competitive skills, the X's and O's. Okay, those soft skills and personal qualities are as important for success as how well they throw a ball, run a play, swim a stroke. Really, what does a committed eight-year-old look like? And how does it change when they're 12? We have to communicate that stuff to our athletes. How does focus change and develop throughout a young athlete's career? So we need to take that time to work with the athletes on developing those skills before we can hold them accountable to those skills. Unfortunately, our culture today, our society today, is giving them a different message. We talk about kids, kids have changed, they're different than they were 20 years ago or 40 years ago. Well, the kids haven't changed, but the influence influences from society and from our culture have changed. Dr. Tim Elmore talks about today's scene, which is an acronym for all the qualities that he sees um, kids being bombarded with uh, in terms of messaging from advertising and social media and things like that. One, speed is good, speed rules, slow is bad. Microwave versus crock pot, right? We want things as quickly as we can get them. We want them as easily as we can get them. We're asking Siri the answer. We're asking Google when we don't know the answer to something. We don't take the time to look it up, to do a deep dive into a subject. We just want quick, easy answers. Entertainment is important and highly valued. Anything that's boring is bad. Well, sometimes practice and the repetition that comes from practice can seem a little bit boring. So again, a counteractive message to what we're looking for every day. Nurture is important. Again, the easy path, take the safe way, be careful. 
Well, without risk, there's no change, and without change, there's no improvement. So we have to give our kids the opportunities and teach them the skill of taking risks, not risks that are going to endanger them, but risks that are going to challenge them. And then entitlement. I deserve it because I'm on the team. I deserve an A because I came to class and I turned in some of my work, right? That hard work, that effort is bad. And certainly that's a message that, that does not ring true at all when we're talking about athletics. So not only do we have to teach some of these qualities and characteristics to our athletes, but we also have to be willing to counteract the messages that are out there in society that kids are exposed to on a daily, minute by minute basis, really. So let's talk about Coach Wooden's pyramid and how he constructed it and the thoughtful way which each block was put together. Joy and hard work go hand in hand, enthusiasm and industriousness. Any study that's ever been done as to why kids play sports is for the fun, for the enjoyment, for the love of the game. So that enthusiasm is something we want to never lose sight of. No matter how competitive the athletes get, we want to keep them enthusiastic and keep that joy in the game for them. And obviously there's no substitute for hard work and effort. Angela Duckworth in her study on grit says effort actually is twice as, more, twice as important as any other quality. Because we take our God-given talents, we apply effort to them and we develop skill. And then we take that skill and apply effort to it in the competitive arena. And that's how we get achievement and performances. So those are the two cornerstones at the bottom edges of the pyramid. Linking those three across the bottom level of the pyramid, these additional foundational blocks revolve around how we treat others. In every youth sports situation and throughout life, we must interact with other people. And those experiences we have with the other people are either going to contribute to or distract from our success. And Coach Wooden knew that and understood it. That friendship, that respect and mutual esteem were so important. And it required an effort from everyone. Being loyal to oneself and being loyal to one's teammates and cooperating always, looking to find the best way, not necessarily to get my own way. On our team, we always use the golden rule as a way of measuring if we were being true to the pyramid, right? Do on to others as you would have them do on to you. Lately, I've become aware of the platinum uh, rule, okay, treating others the way they would like to be treated. Certainly a step up from the golden rule, but either of those is a step up from selfishness and um, individual, uh, an individual focus. On the second level of Coach's Pyramid. He has four blocks, which are the inner qualities that, that really are going to drive improvement. They allow us to make the right kind of choices that are going to lead to reaching success. Having common sense, always making good choices, making the right choices. Being alert and aware, a good understanding of your surroundings, 
and being eager and interested in learning and getting better. Some kids don't bring that to the table at practice on a daily basis. We need to teach them what that, what that really looks like. And then having initiative, okay? Not, not only being able to, being willing to take risks and make decisions and think on our own, which is so important when the players are out on the field so we're not joystick coaching them, right? controlling every movement. We want them to be able to make decisions and learn to be independent. And also, we want them certainly to embrace failure and learn from failure. And setting great goals and being intent on achieving those goals. Setting worthy goals that are gonna, as Dr. Rob Bell, another of our think tank speaker says, set your heart on fire. And that are going to drive you to continue to work towards that goal, no matter the difficulties that you face. And these words have, have really taken on a new life in the last 10 to 15 years as grit and growth mindset in our lexicon of, of mental training, right? Grit, passion and perseverance for long-term goals and growth mindset, that idea that I can get better and I can get better by challenging myself and by working hard. These are all things that our athletes really need to be taught. On the third level of the pyramid, Coach Wooden put at the very heart and center the idea of skill. Having the proper knowledge and the ability to execute that knowledge is so important. Whether we're engaged in sport or just engaged in life, always being prepared and having those strong fundamentals that allow us to achieve success. Surrounding that on that third level at the heart of the pyramid, our condition and team spirit. Skill has very little value without the strength and the energy to use that skill. And our efforts are always enhanced by being part of a cause that's larger than ourselves. That's why these two qualities are so important to be on that level with skill. Interesting thing about team spirit, it's, it, it's one of the few blocks that Coach Wooden changed over the years. And he changed the word, uh, changed to the word eagerness from the word willingness. And Coach said, it, you know, one might be willing to do something to sacrifice for the better good if they're asked to do it. But that's different than being eager and seeking out the opportunity to sacrifice personal interest for the greater glory. On the fourth level, poise and confidence. Two more inner qualities that are built on all the blocks that come below, from below. I had the great opportunity to sit down with Coach Wooden one afternoon and spend some time with him. And one of the things he told me was that being true to yourself is one of the hardest challenges for any person. Having that poise of being comfortable in your own skin and then being confident about your abilities and about your preparation and keeping everything in perspective, never getting too high or too low. And these finally lead to the pinnacle of Coach's Pyramid, competitive greatness, rising to meet the challenge that we're faced with. And again, this applies to our young athletes as in, in competition as, 
and it equally applies to them in life. And it's not enough just to have com competitive greatness and rising to meet the challenge. We also have to have faith and patience that our efforts and that our work in developing each block of the pyramid is going to lead us to that ultimate success. As we know, good things take time and focusing on the process and believing in the process, having faith in the process of development is so important for both our young athletes and for their parents. Coach also added eight other qualities along the side of the pyramid. He called them the mortar that ties all the other blocks together. And I've listed those here. Um, certainly they're important, um, but I want to keep the focus really on the, the 15 blocks of the pyramid. So how can we apply this with our athletes? First of all, by creating a great set of daily habits for ourselves, right? What words do we choose when we're communicating with our athletes? Are the blocks of Coach Wooden's pyramid part of our vocabulary when we're talking about what's going to happen in practice or providing feedback to them? We want to use those terms or your interpretation of them or your own set of your team's values to influence our athlete's behavior. First way we do that is by leading with example, but the second way is by rewarding and recognizing those things that our athletes do that exemplify the character ideals that Coach Wooden set forth or the character ideals of your own team values, team culture that you guys have previously set. Coaching is all about behavioral change, right? We either have to change their behavior in terms of their execution of skills within the game, or we need to change their behavior in terms of their personal interactions with each other or their attitude. Third way we can do it on a daily basis is by seizing those teachable moments that surround us. Dr. Jerry Lynch likes to talk about the power of one, one athlete, one moment, one word. That's how we really can change a life in that singular interaction where we're recognizing improvement, where we're recognizing um, how they have exhibited those values that are important, or by providing that correction to move them towards developing those values. Another way we can apply the pyramid is through an individual um, worksheet that you might do, distribute a copy of the pyramid. Uh, I've provided a link here to a worksheet that UCLA um, uses as part of their educational efforts. Um, just a series of questions of what do these blocks on the pyramid mean? How do you use them and show them? Why are they important? So you can create your own type of worksheet for that if you'd like. Then have them complete that worksheet. They can either do it at practice, maybe do it at home, bring it back next practice, and then have meetings either with the athletes individually or as a group to discuss the responses um, that the athletes have to those questions. And that will help guide you in, in terms of identifying areas where maybe the team could be better um, or, or maybe just an individual uh, needs to, to do some, some work. 
You can set up a small group project um, where you ask each group of athletes to interpret uh, a block or a set of blocks, depending on your team size, and then have them design their own version of the block, their own definition of that quality on a piece of poster board or something um, that you can then put on the wall of your practice facility um, or in your locker room. It's a way to, to um, create ownership within the team of the pyramid uh, and allow you guys to use it as your own. You can certainly use the pyramid in team meetings. Um, put a, a picture of the pyramid up on the wall, um, give each athlete a copy of the pyramid, then divide them into groups to discuss the individual blocks um, or groups of blocks, again, depending on team size. Bring them back together, kind of report on the discussion. This is what we, we feel that poise looks like. This is why it's important to us. Then I think a really valuable version uh, of this exercise is to give each athlete uh, uh, one of those colored sticky dots and have them go place the dot on the individual block that they feel is most important to team success. And in that way, you can identify, you know, you'll probably get certain blocks that are going to get multiple um, tags by the athletes. So and then you can take and place the top eight of those values on this wheel of success, um, you know, in each of the blank spaces there, put one of those qualities, and then the, athlete, the team can rate the team's performance in those areas on a scale of one to five, and you can see how round your circle is or how imperfect your wheel is and the areas where maybe we need to put some air into that area to make the wheel roll a little better. The next step in this exercise, or certainly you could do it on another day if you wished, was would be to give each athlete a different color dot and ask them to place it on the block that is the weakest area within the team. And again, you're going to get probably get one block that has more dots on it than any other. Okay, that's good information for you as coach, good information for the athletes um, to help them understand where their weaknesses are. And then you can develop a strategy uh, and develop a plan to how are we going to improve in this area of weakness? And then how are we going to capitalize on those things that are strengths within our team? Another way to use it uh, in a team meeting um, is to, once you've established those top five to eight qualities that your team values the most, uh, sit down and discuss what does that look like in different areas of life. Uh, we like to use the 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 areas of school, home, in the community, and at practice and competition. And then create some type of visual tool for the team to use. Um, several teams that I've worked with before have used uh, a matrix for that. So this is one example from the Commonwealth Current outside of or, or in the city of Boston. And Coach Chris Shepard with that team, um, they, they actually have a, a a retreat uh, on a weekend every fall that's run by their senior team athletes, their high school age athletes. Um, it's for all the athletes on the club. And this is what they established last year at their fall retreat, um, that they value commitment, respect, determination, integrity, and positivity. And then what each of those look like. Great exercise as you're setting team values. So in conclusion, Coach Wooden's pyramid is timeless and evergreen. And it's probably more valuable 
today than it was in 1940, because back in the 40s, athletes were getting these messages concurrently at practice, at home, and from the culture and from society. And today, those messages are much different. And I want to urge you that building better people is more important than winning more games. It's always going to trump whatever success you have competitively. It's the type of people that are coming out of your program and what they accomplish after they leave your program. So through this deeper understanding of the pyramid and, and being intentional on a daily basis in our communication and in how we set up our relationships, how we set up our practices, we can create that rock solid team culture that every team strives for and that every team that's successful um, talks about as such a key to success. It will enable each of us and each of our athletes to make each day our masterpieces. Thank you for being a part of today. Um, got a couple extra resources for you. This is um, the Pyramid of Teaching Success. So it's a pyramid for coaches and teachers. Um, and we'll have a link to that in the, in the notes um, after this uh, presentation. Here's a copy of the Wheel of Success. And if you just go on Google and search Wheel of Success, you'll find it. Here's how you get in touch with me. Again, thanks for, for being a part of this and wish you all the best in your coaching endeavors.